this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial I just want to talk a bit about what you might want to do after you've finished learning basic Java so I just want to discuss kind of um, your kind of progression through Java um, because a number of people have asked me questions like what do I do after I finish the basic course and can I get a job in Java and stuff like that so if you're anxious to get started with programming Java then certainly skip this tutorial and go forward to the first kind of Hello World program Java tutorial in this series but if you want more information about what you can do next after you finish this course and so on then stay tuned so uh, firstly about certification I, I don't have any kind of certification I don't have a degree in Java I actually taught myself to program in about 96 mainly from books and then I got a job in it somehow um, and uh, that was in Cambridge UK and I, I worked in it um, I've worked in it ever since first as a permanent kind of guy and then as a contractor and now I'm uh, obviously making videos actually for a living so you don't need any kind of certification but if you um, haven't got a degree then um, when you probably haven't if you're looking at this course I don't know then it certainly can't, can't hurt to have certification in Java and it can help get you into the profession certainly now I know very very little about certification and in fact exams in general just drive me up the wall I can't get on with them so um, I, I'm not the right person to tell you about this but I just wanted to tell you that certification does exist you can pay for it, you can take an exam and the stuff that you're going to learn in my Java course is going to be good preparation for that but I can't guarantee um, that I cover everything that you will need to get certified so if I look at this programmer level 1 exam then I should think I'm covering you know, more than enough for this but again I, I don't want to guarantee it and if you're going to prepare for an exam then certainly Google the kind of exam requirements and make sure you've nailed everything that you need to know before you take the certification and if you want to know more about the kind of Java job market I'd recommend taking a look at JobServe um, because now I'm completely self-employed myself but whenever I needed a contract or a job in the past what I do is I go to jobserve.com or .co.uk and I would search for jobs in here and you can basically upload a CV and you can apply for jobs with just one or two clicks and so in keywords here you type something like Java I don't know and if you have any other skills maybe you'd want to type those in as well or you could type like Java trainee or Java junior or something like that because there are a lot of Java um, junior positions out there well not a lot but they do they do definitely come up well I guess I should say there are a lot of junior positions but um, they might ask for commercial experience and we'll talk about that um, just in a little while but this can searching for different keywords in JobServe can give you a really good feel for what there is out there and most of them that come up are going to look like um, you will probably have a lot more than this in your area because I'm, I'm actually in Budapest at the moment in Hungary where there aren't so many jobs unfortunately but um, this most of the jobs that come up will kind of look very perplexing like this I mean things like this they look kind of intimidating you know even to me but I'd say don't be intimidated by them what I, what I would do if I wanted to get a job now would be I would look at job serve every day and you can in fact search the jobs that you see in order of date which I think they're not sorted by um, default in order of date I think they're sorted by order of relevance and you can look at the new ones that have come in every day and just apply for any that you think you might have a chance with and keep doing it and don't expect to hear much back for a couple of weeks and uh, eventually you will probably start to hear back from people assuming you have Java skills and you've taken the time to make um, a CV that looks reasonably nice now the big kind of barrier to getting a job is commercial experience because most jobs want commercial experience 
I, I did manage to get a job myself originally without any commercial experience. So it is possible. You have to be persistent and keep applying for stuff and don't feel bad if you get turned down. And if you can get an interview, even if you fail the interview, I think, well, this is great because, you know, you've got practice sitting in an interview and you, you start to feel more relaxed in interviews as time goes by. So any, any step that you can make, any interest you can get is better than no interest even if it doesn't result in a job at the end of it. But you have to stay positive to get a job. Now, to get commercial in, uh, experience, um, you you might just be lucky with a job. You might even want to look for jobs that, um, for stuff like data entry, which I know is terribly dull, or software testing, because you might find a job that requires very minimal skills but allows you to do it has some element of programming in it or it allows you, you know, you can go in there and say, well, look, I could write a program that could do this. And it might enable you to get in, get in your foot in the door. So think about other jobs that um, are connected to Java, if you want a job, that is. Um, I think, uh, yeah, so, and to get commercial experience, another thing you can do is, well, you could give your services away for free, you know, just look for companies um, or even, I don't know, approach people who make Java applications, Google for them and ask if they want a hand. And, you know, if you can get them to pay you anything in return, then it's, you know, it's some experience which looks great on your CV. And you can also try going to places like guru.com where um, you can bid for contracts which typically aren't very well paid because you're competing with people from all over the world. Um, so by US or UK or Western European standards, they're not well paid. But um, I guess by Indian standards or even Eastern European standards, you can find stuff on here that isn't too badly paid. And again, if you want to get a, like a kind of proper job, then you can gain commercial experience on here. Because at the end of the day, if you're paid for doing something, then that is commercial experience. So check out guru.com if you like. Uh, now, whether you're looking for a job at the end of the day, or you just want, you're just doing Java as a hobby, you'll you'll probably be interested in what you should do next after going through a basic course. And at the time that I've made this video, actually, my basic course isn't even complete. So um, you probably just want to, I don't know, just just Google stuff and have a look. Yeah, have a look maybe at the certification requirements and see what other odds and ends there are um, to, to basic Java. And in this basic course, this Java for Complete Beginners, um, I, I, don't, I, I don't cover, at least at the moment, I got one star review here, it's terrible, from someone, see this is why I'm making this video, anyway I won't get off on that. Yeah, so like, um, there's, um, what's the saying? Yeah, so this is all about creating console mode applications. And um, I don't go into stuff like mobile phone programming or internet programming or um, desktop programming in this tutorial series because this is all about basic Java syntax. And once you've studied the basic Java syntax, you might want to then specialize in a particular kind of type of programming like internet, mobile phone or um, desktop or applets or something like that. Now, I actually also have a course on Java multi-threading, which is free. Um, so you can check out that on udemy.com, or it's also on YouTube. And um, this uh, this is something that, in the more advanced Java certification exams, or if you're doing a degree, you'll be expected to know. Although a lot of people go through their entire careers without understanding multi-threading, so equally, um, if you find it too dry, you could give it a miss. But, you know, checking out the first two, first few videos here will really help you a lot. Like the first four or something will probably help you a lot to, um, to like, um, accomplish a lot of basic tasks in Java. Now, beyond the basic syntax, there's, I guess there's probably, well, three main areas that I know anything about. I mean, some people write Java programs that run washing machines and things like that, and I know nothing about this. 
But aside from that, as far as I know, there are kind of three main areas that you might want to go into. And I happen to have courses on all of those three areas, which are not free, but the first, first few videos, like the first seven videos in each of these, are free. So you could check those out if you want to. And the, th the three main areas are, um, firstly, Java Swing. Java Swing is a user interface kind of toolkit that's built into Java that lets you write Java desktop programs and you can also use it for, you see five stars there, which is good, um, but you can also use it for writing um, programs that run on the internet. And uh, this is still, I think Java applets as they're called, have never been massively popular, but they've always been used. And for example, uh, I worked at at and in my last contract about um, a year and a half ago now. And there they had like an applet that enabled them to visualize the kind of um, network of a, a major global company. I won't say which one, but they used um, Java Swing programs there that ran in a browser and that's called an applet or a Java web start program also. So that's one kind of major area kind of user interface programming, desktop or internet, and that's called Java Swing. But uh, yeah, if, if you want to know how many jobs there are in Java Swing, then you could do a search on JobServe, for example, in the USA, jobserve.com. And last time I did this, I found 36 jobs. I think that was from the last seven days. So it's, um, it's an important area, and it's going to continue to be an important area for the foreseeable future. But it's not the most, it's not the biggest area in Java at the moment, I wouldn't say. Although it is, as I say, important and useful. One of the biggest areas of Java development is um, writing programs for the internet, creating websites using Java as a kind of back end technology, a kind of server technology that then creates websites. And to do that, you'd want to know basic kind of HTML, certainly, and probably some SQL as well. SQL is, is that's a language for kind of querying databases. And if you do those two things, and neither of them are all that hard to learn, they're not as hard as learning Java, then you could take like a, a course on writing servlets and JSPs. And you might also want to think about, I don't have a course on this at the moment, but I might do by the time you you're watching this tutorial, you might want to think about looking into something like the um, Spring um, framework because uh, that's used a lot. Let's, let's take a look. Spring framework to create um, Java web programs. So I think this is it here. So it says Spring is the most popular application development framework for enterprise Java. Enterprise Java, it means basically server-side um, Java that creates stuff that you that people then look at in a browser. And um, and that's what this Servlets and JSP course is also on, although I don't go on to cover this Spring framework. I just cover kind of the basics of using this kind of servlet technology, which as far as I know is still very much used but um, since I haven't done any spring at the moment, um, you might want to check out this as well before you decide whether to subscribe to this or not. But this is a course on creating websites in Java, basically. And that's like a huge area. Like if you want a job, this is one of the big areas to go into. And if we go to jobserve.com, um, I can, maybe I can change this to my location to the USA. That would be good. Um, where are we? United States, so Europe, Middle East, North America, United States of America. And if you search in there for, let's say, Servlet, which is the technology that I discuss in this course here, my Servlets and JSP course, then you'll find lots of jobs using Servlets and JSPs. Well, we've got 17 here. Um, which I'm sure there should be more than that. Let's try servlets with an S. And 70 for servlets with an S 
in the USA and I think that's in the last seven days, I'm not sure. So this is a huge area in Java, servlets and JSPs. And um, it's, it's a really good thing to get into if you want a job, basically. And you can find the first seven videos for free from my course on Udemy here, um, udemy.com slash Java Web Tut, T-U-T. And so that's, we've, we've looked at desktop and internet kind of related Java. And by the way, don't get confused with JavaScript, which has nothing to do with Java directly. It's a separate thing. And another big area is Android programming at the moment. I'm not actually sure how many jobs there are in Android. Let's, let's do a quick search, Android. Um, and it's also, yeah, 155 for Android. And if you, even if you, if you're just doing Java for a hobby, if you've got a fancy mobile phone or you're prepared to buy one that runs Android, this is worth getting into. Um, Android is an operating system from Google that uh, runs on mobile phones and some um, kind of tablets at the moment. And uh, it allows you, the idea is you can like touch the screen and move things about with your fingers. And this is clearly a massive, massive up and coming area. This is something that we've never really seen before in the history of the human race on a big scale, being able to just move stuff on the screen with your fingers. And it's, it fascinates a lot of people. And at the moment, I've got this Android course actually with some free videos, um, six or seven, I'm not sure, free videos, um, which is in progress at the moment. But by the time you look at this tutorial, perhaps I will have finished this course, I don't know. And that's, again, a really, really good area to get into, both just from the point of view of interest and also if you want a job in Java, it's a great area to get into. And that's for, as I say, pro programming mobile phones principally and also um, kind of tablet computers. So that's more than enough for this tutorial. Um, in, in a nutshell, do basic Java, consider looking at Java multi-threading a bit and then think about going into Java Swing or servlets and JSPs or Android and consider looking at the Spring framework as well as your next step. So um, if you've just started this course actually, then good luck with it. And um, this is something that if you're persistent it can you can really make this make an income for you in lots of ways whether you do it through something like guru.com as a freelancer which is certainly hard work but, you, but people do manage it or whether you get a job in Java or even if you decide to start teaching it there's a huge demand for teachers of Java if you're any good and it's something that will definitely stand you in good stead although at first as I've said before it seems very complex and baffling but if you just keep trying to write programs, don't, be, don't ever be afraid to Google stuff. You know, search for solutions um, f from people who've done what, you, what you're trying to do before. And gradually it will come together in your head and you'll see that it's not rocket science. It just seems like it initially, but it isn't. It's not that difficult, basically. It just takes a lot of time to gradually learn how to do it. And if you try to write your own programs, try to think of something that really excites you, that you really want to write, and try just try to write that, and you'll find, and that's what I did, and you'll find that it gradually comes together, even if it's baffling at first. So good luck, and join me again for the next tutorial, and until then, happy coding. Mm -hmm.